Sometimes in doubles, things just come together in a really negative way. <laughs> And you just, you know, it's just one of those kind of games. That definitely happened to me in this set. This is part two in my first league match outside with a new partner. And if you haven't seen part one yet, definitely watch that. That was uh, the first set. This is the second set. We won the first set 6-2. My partner and I, in general, kind of being in control, being more offensive. And in this second set, we'll see if we can keep that rolling. Nope. nope. Good tempo on that two, forehand. Two, two, two. Uh, just realized that was part one. I talked about the forehand tempo. Um, it was nice, confident, but um, not over overdoing it here on this uh, return to serve. That's really my, he kind of jammed me a little bit with that. Um, but like that swing tempo and like confidence without being, without being super crazy and, uh, and aggressive. Uh. That was a nice shot by the uh, player in blue. I actually really like the timing here. Watch the, the timing of my move here towards uh, the middle. I, I really timed that pretty much perfectly. I'm starting to push right before he makes contact. And so I'm trying hard to get to a position where I can cut that off. And he just, he puts that in a perfect spot. Uh, solid drive, keeping it low at my partner's feet. That was, that was really nice. Backhand drive, return. Got it. Oh, that was just classic pressure, 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 pressure. This is my kind of uh, doubles point. First of all, I love this block uh, return to serve from me. Just super relaxed and just really just blocking it back, but just placing it in just the right spot. And as soon as I uh, realize that the server's staying back, I'm coming in right behind it. This is not an easy shot, but again, just being solid, just placing it, nothing crazy, pretty high over the net actually, but just placed it well enough, getting closer. Look at my partner right on top of the net. Good low ball, but again, just placing it. And so none of these are crazy shots. All I'm doing here is I'm improving my position, improving my position. It's just like, I'm just walking them down, walking them down, walking and walking them down. Meanwhile, my partner's trying to cut it off. I'm just staying solid, trying to put it in the corner, all while I get closer and closer and closer to kind of like the standoff uh, moment. And so when this lob goes in the air, look at my early uh, shift here. Um, yeah, I guess I'm reading his uh, racket face. Look at his grip and the angle of his racket. And so watch my left foot, since I'm left-handed. Watch my uh, left foot right here, boom. I'm, I'm moving already. Just before he hits the ball, I'm already turning to the side. And after a while, you just kind of get a feeling, like kind of a sixth sense for like, I'm, I'm pressuring this much, this much, this much, this much. And eventually, like there's a, a pressure release that has to happen. And so, uh, if you can kind of look for that, you can over time get attuned to it and anticipate the, the lob and start getting ready for it before the lob even gets hit. Got I mean, it. I mean, that's the shot I wanted. No, 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 no. Go! It's great. It's great. All right, here we go. First serves, right? Yes, sir. That's what we do. <laughs> that's, all, that's, all we, that's all we know how to do. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's tough. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Just out of my yeah. Room. Just out of my room. No worries. No worries. So he's apologizing for it, kind of, but you know, that's fine. Like, if he doesn't feel comfortable with it, it's totally fine. Uh, but watch how uh, I put my racket out anyway. He's apologizing because he feels like he could have made a, a move at this. But look at how I'm, I'm already setting my racket up just in case he doesn't. And uh, doubles players, doubles players. You all can be just so finicky and picky. There's so many, so many doubles players would complain and like blame their partner, you know, whatever. Just take responsibility for the ball, please. Like whether you're the front player or the back player, either person can take it. It's okay. You don't have to play the, oh, it's your forehand, but it's the second Thursday of the month. And so it's time for your rotation to take it. Uh, and I'm left-handed, so uh, the sun's in the east and like, 
and so it's your ball. No, just, but just be ready for the ball. There's so, so much like blaming and whining and complaining that goes on. Just always have your racket ready for, for the ball and just take responsibility for whatever comes your way. Um, he may, <laughs> you can see me here. Like I, I, th I thought he was going to take it, but I put myself in a position just in case he didn't. And that's the mindset you should have is no matter how much you think it should be your partner's ball, just be ready to hit the ball. Just, just be ready to hit the ball. And frankly, I, I probably got a little lucky here that you know it was just kind of a last second, like shoveled it over, and you know we lost the point. But at least I made him play another ball, you know. And it was just a, a tough situation. Come on. Remember in, the, in part one where I was like, I just get a feeling that we were kind of getting in the head of the, the orange shirt guy. I love this, this big aggressive move by, by my partner. I mean, he's, he's turning his, uh, his chest and his shoulders and he's just like showing it to him. And uh, so much of like the doubles I like to play is just daring that, daring that target. Please try it. Please try, like, please try to beat us down the alley. And when that era comes, it's it's like such a satisfying thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, all day, all day. Nice move. I saw you. Oh. Yeah. All day. That's all you. Uh, Sit. Good serve. Nice, good pressure. There's the orange uh, guy in the orange shirt doing the exact same thing to me uh, that I did to them a little bit earlier. I had a good return here, but not good enough to come in uh, behind it because he's setting up comfortable, could pretty much do whatever he wants with this. Chipping and charging, and now it's just, now it's me under the gun with two attacking offensive players up at the net. I'm back at the baseline, and this just, it just really, you know, puts me in a tough spot to have to hit a good shot. Really nice play. Nope. Nope. Oh, nice move. Yeah. That was perfectly timed. And especially since the guy in the blue shirt really hadn't done a whole lot up until this point. I mean, the ball's bouncing, just creeping here. It, look at it, right before the ball gets to my racket is when he really kind of physically makes the, the lean. That was perfectly timed. It was a really nice play. I, to be totally honest, I don't, I don't know why they didn't set that up uh, more often uh, throughout, throughout the match. Um, he, he really just didn't give us enough reason to really kind of respect it or at least um, anticipate that it was going to happen more than once in a while. Yeah. Sir. That's too good. Wow, I got it. Sorry, I got to do more with that. <laughs> There's the, uh, some of those backhand volleys I was talking about in part one. Man, I got it. I'm just like behind on this, just not getting my racket square to the ball in time. And that's just that I'm tr I want to hit that hard, like at his you know, like left foot, ideally. And I'm just Man, giving him a shoulder, that, his hands are fantastic. Giving him a shoulder high ball is just like asking to just be punished. I got so lucky on that. Sorry, I gotta do more with that. Nope! No, 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 no. Yeah, watch the early, uh, the early hop again here. Just giving him something to think about. Make him wonder if I'm going. I guarantee you he's going probably changing his target here and, and going line. And so you, when this happens, like you should be, the attitude that over, like year after year after year that I tend to see from, from club doubles players is when this happens, they say to themselves, oh, I got so lucky. Like I made a move and they went for it and they missed. Oh man, did I get away with one there? Um, my mentality here is the exact opposite. I'm like celebrating and patting myself on the back and going, yeah, attaboy, Ian. Like, get, keep keep moving, keep making him think about it. Like, I'm I'm like 
putting up a tally mark like on the chalkboard for myself like when that happens. I'm like I'm celebrating that internally. Go, 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 go! No, no, why? Oh, that's your chance. I know, I know it's my chance. It was wide. <laughs> I should have just called it in and smacked it down. Not post, but you don't get that a whole lot. No, you don't. Oh man, how, how wide was that? Man, that's really close. That yelling I just did to my partner probably triggered a whole bunch of people out there. I know a lot of people don't like being yelled at when there's like a, a short ball. Listen to that again. <laughs> oh yeah, it was, it was just wide. Uh, it was so close. That would have been an epic shot. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was actually a good bit wide, but that was, that was setting up perfectly for him to go in. And he, look at, he was thinking about it too. He was lining it up. <laughs> That's too bad it was out. Chance. I know, I know it's my chance. It was wide. <laughs> I should have just called it in and smacked it down. Post, but you don't get that a whole lot. No, you don't. Nope. 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 Good serve. Nope. Great job, great job. Great defense from my partner there. Uh, tough spot, way to put the ball up there. In this situation, if I'm a guy in the red shirt, I'm not, I'm not staying there. Because uh, he just basically presents himself as a target in this situation. Um, when his partner gets pushed back, and look at me, I'm scoping him out hardcore right now, thinking like, can I, can I get in here? Can I sneak in? And once it bounces, that's my ticket in. And I'm just like hoping for anything in the middle. And look at the early, the early move here I make too. Even though I set, see him setting up for, for an overhead, I'm just thinking, man, he's going cross on this. And yeah, kind of orange shirt is just a sitting, just an easy target at that point. So he doesn't necessarily need to go all the way back to the baseline, but I think scooting back to maybe somewhere in here, like a just in case kind of scenario, would have been a, a better play. Their energy's down. For sure. Right, we for gotta, sure. gotta, we gotta say, uh, High, high intensity. That comment's so key. When um, every tennis match has ebbs and flows of, of momentum or energy, and as soon as you can kind of sniff out that your opponents are doing this, whatever you can do to do this and kind of counterbalance it uh, and fill that you know void, if you just maintain, okay, like that's good. At least you're not dropping with them. But if you can ramp up right as they're ramping down. You can just, you know, bulldoze people right at the end. Uh, and so it's important to kind of be mindful of that and watch for it. Look for those opportunities. Oh. Sorry, I didn't get it there. Uh, same comment I made is in uh, part one there. Uh, we, we both knew that he kind of preferred his backhand. And I made the comment, like, it just, I don't know if the target here was body or if it was T, but... Backhand was not the, the plan, and so he heck of a shot. I mean, it's about as good of a return as you can hit. Sorry, I didn't get it there. Oh. Come on, come on. Oh. Good hands, good hands. Good really hands. nice cover by my partner there. Watch, watch what he does here. Um, this is really, really smart doubles. <clears throat> Fantastic return. I mean, I get lucky just to just to get this back. I mean, he placed it perfectly. And as uh, he winds up for this shot, well, look at my partner. Uh, my partner is buying time. As soon as he sniffs out that our opponent here is in attack mode, uh, I, frankly, I'm a little reckless. <laughs> I'm a little. Look at the size of the the step I make here, and I'm I'm like I don't care. Like I'm I'm going forwards. Meanwhile, look at my uh, my partner is buying some time and buying some space because he was pretty close, and so. When we both uh, split step, 
he's bought, he's bought himself a little bit of time to be able to respond to this shot. So here's where he hits this shot. Look at where his left uh, foot is, just inside the, the service line. Look at where he started. I mean, this, this is where he was when the return was hit. I mean, this is a, this is a 10 foot chunk of uh, court. Had he stayed in this position, the middle is wide open, or if the person in the orange shirt wants to target him, he can just go right at him. It's probably an easy point. Uh, the fact that he read the scenario, look, he starts moving back like before I even hit this you know, awkward shot. And so he's reading the scenario way ahead of time so that by the time that attacking shot happens, he's back in a much more defensive position. And that's, what, that's what keeps us in this, in this point. And from there, it's just kind of a, you know, a volley, uh, volley battle. Oh. Oh. Nope. Oh. It was wide. Yeah, it was wide, Greg. I've done this a couple of times recently, and, and I always feel, uh, Ira and I did a, a video where we kind of disagreed on this. Um, uh, they were going to give us this, uh, this point. And uh, pretty clearly wide, you know, I, it really honestly wasn't even that close. I, I don't know how they missed the call. And uh, they could have also you know, caught a let if they, re if they really wanted to. That would have been a little bit of a stretch, but, um, but, but the volley was wide. And uh, they're kind of like thinking about it. My partner and I totally could have just taken this point. It was wide. Yeah, it was wide, Greg. And I... I, I I don't know what my partner uh, would have done. I, I, I don't think he said anything right away. Um, so I, part of me feels a little bad that I called my own partner's uh, volley out. It was wide. Yeah, it was wide, Greg. <laughs> um, but it's just, the, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, I, I know a lot of people out there probably disagree with, you know, like, you just don't, you don't overrule your partner. You don't, you know, uh, but the, the rule book is super clear that, that if you clearly see your own shot out, then you, you, the rules say you should call your own shot out. Uh, that's the only time that you have sway or authority in, in a call on your opponent's side of the court is when you get a, a better look than they do or you see a clear you know, angle that a shot was out that they don't call. And... Um, I feel like I've done that a couple times where my partner really didn't appreciate it. And uh, I, I don't think this was one of those times. I'm not saying that my partner was angry at me or anything like that, but, but that can be a little touchy sometimes when your partner feels like maybe you're thro throwing them underneath the bus a little bit. What, what do you think, like, what would you, everybody on the internet is gonna say, oh yeah, I would have called our own shout out, but, uh, <laughs> but really, what, what do you think, what do you think is the, the right, I mean, by the rule book, obviously it's the right play, but. Not everybody would, would call that out. And it feels, it feels kind of a little icky to call your partner's shot out. So it can, it's a kind of a tricky situation. I mean, his backhand is no good either, so. I haven't really gone out wide, have I? No, let's do it. Okay, okay. I love yep. it from partner. Yep, yep. So he's signaling uh, wide and stay. I, I love this feedback. I, I love this kind of communication from my partner. Like, and I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, I, get, I hadn't, even, hadn't even thought about that. Look at my partner, by the way, covering it, doing the, the mouth uh, cover. Uh, I lo love how seriously he's taking it. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Backhand is no good either. So. I haven't really gone out wide, have I? No, let's do it. I'll try, okay. <laughs> yep. Like, yep. Just in case somebody's like trying to read his lips or like like steal our signals or something like that. I love it. Forty thirty. Oh. Oh. You choose. Oh wow. Oh, shoot. I don't know. About I think it was dry. I, yeah, I think, I think it was dry. I don't know. I mean. Sorry, that's sort of no, terrible. No, it's Man, what a terrible point. <laughs> First of all, I, like we, we decide on out wide and my serve goes down the tee. Just another example of just my serve just being just all over the, I mean, not even close. It wasn't even close to a body serve. It was just straight up down the tee. Listen to my communication here to my partner. Oh. You choose. And I, I, I tell him like, go, go ahead and just pick a side. Uh, I don't remember ever saying that um, or ever recommending that somebody would, would like just tell your partner, ah, just pick a side. Uh, I don't mind scrambling around, but uh, kind of funny that I said that out loud. I don't remember that. You choose. 
What an ugly point, man. Oh, shoot. I, I think it was dry. I, yeah, I think, I think it was dry. I don't know. <sighs> I mean... Sorry, that's sort of no, terrible. No, it's tough. It's the right play to kid. Switch. Sit ball, sit. Oh Just missing all kinds of serves now at this point. Oof, got lucky there. Oh, just struggling. Got it. Sorry, man. Good, man. Here we go. Yeah, we're good. Here we go. Get him back. Get him right here. <clears throat> man, just ugly, uh, ugly game. All I don't know how many doubles did I have there. Too, uh, for sure, too. Um, I don't. I think I only made like one or two first serves, and so just rhythm, just all over the place. Uh, missed multiple missed volleys, multiple double faults, and, and watch my uh, watch my partner here. Um, watch his uh, his body language, his like nonverbal communication. His, uh, his tempo, like walking towards me, extending his hand, just, just watch this. Sorry, man. Here we go. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, all we're positive, right all here. positive. I, this is, there's such, that, that is such a huge chunk of being successful in doubles. Like I just played about the worst, outside of like double faulting four times in a row, about the worst game, you know, that I could have played there. Uh, and for him to turn around uh, like a quick, like positive, like chipper walk, like, Positive, you know, body language, like, give me five, uh, no problem, we'll, you know, we'll get it back. It's so huge. I, I just really can't overstate how big that is. And uh, just great support and great, just, just a great partner there. Just make him play shots. Just make him play shots, right, Coach? <laughs> he, uh, he coaches the high school uh, team, so we were just kind of making uh, Coach uh, jokes back and forth. Come on, come on. Yeah, nice, 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 man. Great hands. Nope. Crappy point there. I want to see this. I want to see the slow motion of that backhand uh, stab. I love. I just. I love points like this. <laughs> just getting put it in a, in a really awkward, uncomfortable position, <laughs> and just doing my best to just figure it out and just kind of make it up as I go. That's that's part of what I love about doubles. Is so much of it is just on the fly, just making stuff up and trying to adapt as much as possible. Nice pressure from my, uh, my partner here on this last, uh, look at what he's doing compared to, um, watch the player in the blue. I don't, you know, I don't want to play uh, call out uh, opponents too much or be too negative, but watch the, the movement of the player on the, uh, on the other side in the blue here. As I get set to hit my ground stroke, he's not doing anything. He's not pressuring me at all. Like he's got so much court here that he could squeeze uh, through. Uh, squeeze towards. Now watch uh, my partner, Matt, when the ball bounces. Look, look, look at this move he's making to try to get in his head and just at least get the guy in the orange to feel like I'm not like safe here. And I wa watch the guy in the blue. Just, just straight, I mean, just straight up standing there and watch my partner. He just went all the way back. Now look, he's going to charge across again, all the way across. That is such a huge contrast there. And it, um, I'm under so much less stress, so much less pressure than the, uh, the opposing baseline players. Fantastic um, positional pressure from my partner. Oh, watch what, uh, watch what happened here. <laughs> watch this. 
look at, ah, there's just a little bit of a bounce, right? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to signal a little bit that maybe this is a fake. And so watch kind of my mini bounce uh, towards the, the middle right here. And so I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to show slight like little variations on uh, the timing, the, the size of the move. And so my, my goal here was when I make that initial like slight like bounce towards the middle, uh, my goal subconsciously is I, I'm hoping he thinks that it's a fake and I'm just going to stay. And so when I come down uh, from that bounce and then make a big you know, cross, that's, that's exactly what, what I was hoping was going to happen. Just okay, there he goes. in their face. <laughs> yeah. It's the most fun for me. But it works. And so that time I bounced out early and just stayed there. Dance, dance. Good point, guys. All right, there you have it. 6-2, six, 6-2, two, six, two, my first league match. First match outside. First match with, with Matt. Uh, a couple hiccups here and there, but... Um, uh, overall, to be honest, uh, watching it back, um, I looked better than I felt uh, on, on that particular day. I really just kind of felt like I was just grabbing, like trying to search for some kind of rhythm, some kind of tempo, and didn't feel especially comfortable uh, the whole match. Uh, watching it back, I think our overall aggressiveness, our assertiveness, uh, our additional like movement that we were doing, uh, additional poaching we were doing, uh, I think just really kind of gave us the, the advantage. Um, we didn't blow them off the courts or anything like that, but we were more active, we were more assertive, we were more offensive, and, uh, and that gave us the, the advantage pretty consistently. Uh, I feel like we were just kind of generally leaning on them, leaning on them, uh, pressuring them. And I would probably attribute that the, more than anything. Uh, to, to the win in this particular match. But uh, well played by, by George and Greg. Um, they had a lot of fantastic shots as well. Um, I, I think they were just a little bit less uh, assertive about pressuring us, and so my partner and I just kind of swarmed in that. Um, and that was thankfully both of our styles of play, uh, and we both kind of similar personalities in terms of being uh, our, our playing style. Uh, we're both coaches. Uh, just kind of being upbeat and positive, so it worked out really well. So big thank you to Matt, and thanks to all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this format, do me a favor and click the like button, and uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be playing a bunch more league matches, so tell me, what do you want to see? Like, uh, what would you like to see different? Uh, what did you enjoy about this one? Totally, this is our first time doing this, so uh, totally open to suggestions. Curious to hear what you think, and we'll keep working hard to make these as... Uh, interesting and also um, educational and like helpful for your own tennis as possible. That's always my goal is to try to combine those as much as I can. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.